Hello and thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. We have already started discussing vendor outgoing payments in accounts payable. We've seen in the previous slide the process of payments. In this slide, we'll cover how does an automatic payment program work. This is not at all specific to manual payments. This is only for automatic payments, which can be done in the company either on a daily, weekly or a monthly basis. There are a couple of things which need to be entered as parameters at the start. We first have the payment ID and the payment date, which is always unique to every payment run. Secondly, we need to enter parameters like the vendor number, the company code, the payment method, and we can choose the specific documents which we need to pay. If we do not choose any specific documents manually, then all of the documents will be paid which are due for this vendor. We should also enter the due by date which will provide an indicator to SAP which documents need to be picked up, which are due on or before the specified date. Once these parameters are entered and saved, we then have to run a proposal. A proposal is basically a trial run which gives you an idea of the different vendor invoices which are going to be paid the total amount which is going to be paid. You can also edit this proposal and choose if you want to block or unblock any specific invoices to be paid. You can display a log of all the different kind of invoices and the different amounts which are going to be paid. And finally, you can also delete the proposal if you want to make any changes in the first step for entering any additional parameters. But if you're happy with the proposal, then you move ahead to the second and the last step, which is the payment run. Payment run is exactly like a proposal run, but the payment run will finally make the postings in accounting. This means once the payment run is selected, your GL account will be posted in SAP and the clear items will be shown in SAP which means if there are 10 invoices which were to be paid those were open items until the proposal stage these open items will now be cleared items in the system which means they will turn from red to green once the payment is made you can also see any payment mediums which you have already created in the system. For example, if you had intended to make a check payment to the vendor and if you had selected a check payment method in the parameters, then a check will also be printed as a spool from SAP. This is a very good mechanism because it allows you not just to post all the payments in one go for either one or multiple vendors, but it also provides any payment mediums which you wanted to select for that particular vendor. Payment mediums are not necessarily only checks. You can also have DMEE formats, for example, Bank Gero or SEPA. So this is how a payment program works in a gist. We will cover this in detail in a demo at the end of the presentation. This is how a parameter screen looks like. As we mentioned earlier, the most important parameters are the company code, the payment method, the vendor number, and you can enter dates like the documents which are entered up to or the items which are due by. 
Also, the next payment date is very important because this is how your system understands that the next payment which you're going to make is going to be on this date, which means if there are any documents which are due to be paid before that will be automatically selected. This is how a parameter screen looks like for automatic payment transactions. The next tab called free selection will give you the option of entering any specific documents which you need to pay. A partial payment is done when a payment is made for less than the actual amount which is outstanding, which means if there are there is an invoice of $100 for the vendor which is due to be paid but you only intend to pay $80 then that will be a partial item. The original open item is cleared and a new open item is posted by the system in this case. And the new open item is for the same amount as the original minus the amount which is paid. Payment differences. So the invoice value will be compared with the payment value in every case. And if there are any payment differences, then these are either separately posted to a GL account if they are under a tolerance limit, or you will get an error if there is a big payment difference. Clearing. Clearing is a process of converting your open items to cleared items. And this happens when your payment matches with the vendor invoice or your payment matches with the vendor down payment, which you've done earlier. There are two ways to clear an account. One is to post with clearing. And that is in cases where vendor issues a credit note for the offsetting invoice. And the other way is to clear the vendor account by manually purging the account. And thus, clearing can be done either manually or automatically. Automatically is when you make an automatic payment in the system, as we saw on the previous slides. Posting payments with a clearing document. Over here, you see that the clearing document is generated, the items are flagged as cleared, and a clearing document number and date is entered against the items. There can be cases when you want to reset a cleared item. When clearing is reset, the clearing data is removed from the line items, which means the reversal data where it existed is removed from the document header. The document changes are logged and can be displayed in the change documents. This is a very important feature in SAP, which will give you a good tracking mechanism for who has done the, the changes to any document and on what date and time were the changes done. And finally, we see that there are some accounts payable reports. These are some of the important reports and we will go through these when we cover our demo session. We've already covered the first report which is called Display Vendor Line Items. We will end the video here and let us cover the demo in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World videos.